Hey, I'm Eric. I'm the Explorer. I'm Phil. I'm the Folklorist. And together we are setting out across the Empire State to explore the haunts and legends of New York. Towering over downtown Utica is the stately Hotel Utica. The hotel serves as the city's crown jewel, having hosted presidents and Hollywood stars. But the hotel lost some of its grandeur as it sat vacant at the end of the 20th century. Now restored, the Hotel Utica is once again housing travelers. But there are floors that remain off limits to the public, and rumors persist that spirits of long-departed guests still roam the halls. What will we discover when we explore the forbidden floors of Hotel Utica? Okay, Phil, you've brought us to downtown Utica. I'm guessing it's the Hotel Utica. You'd be guessing correct. And I'm hoping that, because I've heard rumor, well, it's not even a rumor, I know there are floors that guests don't get to go see. Very true, but you don't know the history yet. So why don't we go talk to someone who knows it? And then we get to go and see some abandoned floors? Maybe. Okay. So this is far as we can get here in the Hotel Utica. We're on the ninth floor. And as uh, a member of the public, this is far as I can get. But we have someone who's going to show us the next floor is up. Okay, Phil, here we are inside the lobby of the Majestic Hotel Utica. We're going to see if we can get to some of those upper floors that I've heard legends about. I know we counted them outside. I know they're there. Mm -hmm. But first, we're talking with Jamie here from the hotel. Tell us a little bit about this amazing building. All right, good morning guys. I'm Jamie. I'm the catering sales manager here at Hotel Utica. Um, so today I'm gonna walk you around, tell you a little bit about the place. Um, Hotel Utica first opened in 1912. So um, definitely a different time period, different things happening uh, around that time. Anybody who was anybody came and stayed here. Um, there was actually uh, a dinner honoring uh, Amelia Earhart in the ballroom. Uh, Judy Garland sang from the mezzanine. Um, like I said, anybody who was anybody stayed here. Um, in, in the 70s, the hotel actually closed um, and it was purchased by a separate group who actually turned it into like an adult care facility. Um, so during that time, the hotel operated under completely different um, standards. Basically, they were rooms that were rented out to people um, who were living um, sort of on their own, not really. Like I said, very different. Looked very different. Um, the Gaetanos and the Caruchis uh, bought the hotel um, in 2001. It reopened um, and it's back to pretty much its original um, facade inside and outside. Um, I know the restoration took years. Um, everything that's not original is replicas, pretty much the chandeliers. Um, everything else is original. So. It's, um, it's kind of eerie if you come in here on a quiet night, Sunday nights, definitely kind of not quiet here. Now, you mentioned some eerie feelings We've and some eerie stuff going on. We've heard a lot of rumors. There's a lot of urban legends about the hotel. There's the tuxedo man that allegedly wanders yeah. the halls. There's the mysterious shadows moving about. What can you say to this? Well, in terms of stories, um, I've heard quite a few. Some of them are the same. Mm -hmm. um, there is a, a popular story about a woman dressed in a um, very old time ball gown and she likes to frequent the mezzanine uh, when the hotel is actually full to, to capacity um, and we have a lot of functions and things going on. Um, she seems to make an appearance. I think that she may be was late for her own ball or, or something, <laughs> but she hangs around. Um, also, the fourth floor has been a, a, a very popular place for some stories and some activity. A lot of guests will come down and say, oh, you know, is there something going on upstairs? And 
I heard some noise and there was knocking on my door, but there was nobody there. So we get a huh. lot of that. Is, is there any room you just don't let out? No, believe it or not. No? Okay. No. <laughs> There's not one of those rooms that, you know, it's here, but nobody actually, you don't actually uh, no. put anybody in the room? No. Okay. All right. You let the ghost free roll. <laughs> <laughs> they have free range. So. And, and the, the tuxedo man you mentioned, Lamplighter Pub, or where is he? Yeah, um, a lot of times he stays back towards the Lamplighter and uh, towards the kitchen area. I think there is some story to him. I, I don't know if there was a poker game that used to take place on a regular basis here and I think that he lost quite a sum and possibly his wife I'm not sure <laughs> that's, that's been part of the story that I've heard um, but he he's not a happy guy I don't think he caused a lot of mischief um, a lot of bottles broken glasses broken um, some people have said that they've seen from the corner of their eye um, so I'm assuming that's him I couldn't tell you for sure <laughs> Now, these stories come in quite frequently, and they do. you were saying that you had a, another story that just came in a couple months ago. Someone sent you a letter. Yeah, actually, it was, it was funny, the timing. Um, it was New Year's Eve. We were getting ready for a wedding here, and it was actually a, an old-fashioned wedding. Mm -hmm. um, and I got a letter from a guy who was going to stay. He was in the area. He came to the front desk just to check on rates, availability. Um, he had said that it was a Sunday afternoon, there was nothing going on and it was quiet. And when he turned around just to admire the space, um, that he saw the woman in her white gown um, standing over the mezzanine. And he turned back to smile because I guess uh, she had caught him off guard, so he was awkward. And when he turned back to smile at her, she was gone. He came back in, he came to the front desk and he asked if there was anything going on in any of the ballrooms or function space. Um, and he couldn't believe it. Actually, he ended his letter with, I'm not someone who believes in these things, so if there's an explanation, <laughs> please feel free to contact me. Um, yeah, so I contacted him back and we gave him the best explanation that we had. <laughs> and uh, I told him to enjoy and come back anytime. <laughs> All right, well, let's go see some of these floors that no one gets to see. I want to explore the Hotel Utica. <laughs> Great. This wallpaper looks like this could certainly be 1910 vintage. Yeah. Like that probably is later, but that, I'm wondering if that isn't original wallpaper. Hey, check this out. It's a fallout shelter sign. Look, you can barely make out the fallout shelter. Is there a basement? <laughs> well, it's funny that you ask. <laughs> So you've been in the basement? There, now there are <laughs> tunnels, are there? I couldn't tell you for sure. <laughs> it's possible. Um, I'm, sure, I'm sure at some point there was. 
I don't know, a tip. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, we've got someplace else to venture then, don't we? <laughs> Well, so this was the mezzanine where Judy Garland famously Same, sang. Yep. I love a parade. I, You're not Judy Garland. No, I don't even know any songs. But well, what, what, a, what a great view of the, uh, the entirety of the lobby here at the Hotel Utica. It is gorgeous. With our cameraman Dave, Dave, you just gave me the whoa, get me out of here. What are you feeling over here? It just feels like something extremely uncomfortable on these up, upper floors. Um, very angry male, if that makes any sense. Um, it's something that knows we're not supposed to be here. <laughs> we're creeping, going up higher. trying to do this for the camera but do you hear that do you hear this walking right there wow Phil I can't believe what we have found in Hotel Utica this is an amazing amazing building and it what a great special place and it's got such a rich history to it but not only that it's also got this sort of echoes of the history that are still coming around today, like the tuxedo man that hangs out in the lamplighter and the uh, mysterious woman that hangs out in the mezzanine whenever there's a giant party or a ball, prom or anything. And the, the things our cameraman heard in the stairwell, I'm surprised he's still here filming. He was really creeped out. Yeah, he wanted to just like bail immediately, so. If you enjoy this episode of the Haunts and Legends of New York, uh, give us a thumbs up, hit a subscribe, and dive into the comments below and let us know where else we should go.